Lonnie, and welcome to our 26th annual Christmas Castle Breakfast. I'm Rita Mercia, your mistress of the Enchanted Forest. So, no, 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 that was yesterday for Halloween. I'm pleased to be a master of ceremony if I could have you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Are we ready to have fun this morning? You bet, we're gonna have fun. Whether you like it or not, we're gonna have fun. So good morning once again, and welcome to the 26th annual Christmas Castle breakfast kickoff for the Salvation Army Christmas season. This breakfast is one of the Army's most important awareness events of the year. We are grateful to each and every one of you for your attendance and your support. This morning we will have an enjoyable time roasting our honorary Christmas Castle Chairperson, City Manager Eileen Donahue. Yeah. A well-known member of the Lowell community, Eileen is a former City Councilor, former Mayor, former State Senator, and now our Lowell City Manager and a longtime supporter of the Salvation Army. It appears that the only title that she didn't have yet, uh, headmaster and superintendent of schools, but there's still time. You're still young and, and you might be able to still do it. So how are you feeling, Eileen, okay? A little worried. And how are the roasters, are you okay? Oh yeah, wonderful. Not for long, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, before we begin, I'd like to introduce the head table. To my right and your left is Captain Nicole Ross, the Corps Officer for the Salvation Army. Nicole. And Captain Timothy Ross, Corps Co Co Officer Salvation Army. Now they're new here, so we have to be careful. Those are the only two people I've not roasted in this room today, so I'd like to come back next year, but that's okay. And we also have Tom Golden, I mean Tom Bowmill, I'm sorry. I was giving you a compliment. <laughs> Chairperson of the Salvation Army Advisory Board. Our honorable guest, uh, Chairperson of the Salvation Army Christmas Castle Breakfast, Eileen Donahue. Michael Gallagher, co-founder and managing partner of Gallagher and Kavanaugh, LLP. All right. <laughs> Chancellor of UMass Lowell, Jacqueline Maloney. <laughs> and state rep, Tom Golden. <laughs> Before I begin any further, I'd just like to introduce people in the room and, I'm, and I hate to say dignitaries, because to me, everybody in this room is a dignitary, so if I omit your name, I'm very, very sorry. You still are a dignitary to me. Um, my colleagues in government, City Councilor Dave Conway. <laughs> City Councilor John Leahy. <laughs> City uh, Register of Deeds, Richard Howe. 
candidate Matt Sheehan from the Regional School Committee. Uh, UMass Lowell, Jackie Maloney, again, <laughs> okay. We just want you to know she's here, we're very proud. Lowell General Hospital, Jody White. Um, sit, uh, town Manager of Drake, Jim Duggan. The man who thinks he's town manager, Warren Shaw. Oh, I forgot he has a Saturday show. I'm doomed. I'm doomed now. Tony Yachensky, Selectman. Middlesex Community College, uh, Jim Campbell. Okay, Jim, former city manager. State reps, Tom Golden, again. I know, I don't know why, but. Um, state rep, Colleen Gary. Congresswoman, oh, I'm sorry, Larry Trahan. <laughs> um, State Rep. Ratty Mom. Lowell Firefighter Chief Jeff Winwood. And a large thank you to the following fire departments, Lowell, Drake, and Tingsboro, for the money raised for the Salvation Army through the boot drive held last year to benefit the WCAP Radiothon. Thank you so much. Welcome to those in attendance, and I'd like to bring someone up here right now. Let's see, I'm a little bit discombobulated because this is a guy that I'm gonna introduce. He's the chairman of the advisory board. This man has, no one ever says anything about him. He comes up here, he does his stuff, he sits back down. That all changes today, Tom, <laughs> because I know so much about you and I wanna share it with those of you wonderful people who are here today. No one is spared at my expense today. Many years ago, Tom Bommel goes into Walmart to buy his son Timmy a rod and reel for his birthday. Tom doesn't know which one to get, so he grabs one and he goes over to the counter. A Walmart associate is standing there wearing dark shades. Tom says, excuse me, sir, can you tell me anything about this rod and reel? The associate says, sir, I am completely blind, but if you will just drop it on the counter, I can tell you everything you need to know about this from the sound that it makes. Tom doesn't believe him, but he drops it on the counter anyway. The associate says, that's a six foot Shakespeare graphite rod with a Zebco 404 reel and a 10 pound test line. It's a good all around combination and it's on sale for $20 this week. Tom Boltmill says, that's amazing that you can tell all that just by the sound it makes from dropping it on the counter, I'll take it. As Tom bends to get the credit card out, out of his pocket, his credit card drops on the floor. Oh, that sounds like a MasterCard, the clerk says. As Tom bends down to pick it up, uh, pick up the card, Tom accidentally breaks wind. At first he's embarrassed and he realizes that there's no way the blind clerk could tell that it was he who farted. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Being blind, he wouldn't know that he was the only person in the room. The man rings up the sale and says, that'll be $34.50, please. Tom is totally confused by this and he asks, did you tell me that it was on sale for $20? How did you get $34.50? The clerk replies, yes sir, the rod and reel is $20, but the duck call is $11 <laughs> and the catfish bait is $3.50, $3.50. So Tom, here's our advisory board guy. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> well, well, first of all, I always, when I grew up, I always wanted to be Tom Golden. So that, what a, <laughs> now, let me start off by wishing everybody in the hall a very Merry Christmas. I don't hear it, come on. So uh, this morning I have to make my remarks brief. I've got an awful cold, but uh, the roasties are happy for this because they're really going to do a job on the city manager this morning. So, 
But uh, on behalf of the advisory board, I'd like to thank City Manager Eileen Donahue for being our honorary chairman this year. Eileen has a very distinguished career serving our community as a city councilor, two-time mayor, state senator, and now our city manager. Thank you for your service. At this time, I would like to ask the members of the Greater Lowell Advisory Board to stand up and be recognized. These are a bunch of great and dedicated people who are in any way help those in need. Could you please stand up, all my members, please? <laughs> amongst those members, amongst those members, uh, Maria Marchian, our Vice Chair. See, Maria, I remembered your name and our events committee chairman, Courtney O'Malley, who helped put this great breakfast together, and she does a fantastic job. Unfortunately, this is her last year doing it, because she's gonna get married next year. Is that an excuse? <laughs> a very big thank you to Captains Nicole and Tim Ross and their in st entire staff down at Appleton Street. They all do a tremendous job of doing the most good. This is Captain Tim and Nicole's first Christmas breakfast here in Lowell and they are both off to a great start serving our community. Thank you both. <laughs> Finally, a big thank you to our sponsors. Without you, we really could not have done this event. A special thank you to Lowell General Circle Health. Thank you. <laughs> and to Trinity Ambulance, our platinum sponsors. Thank you both. <laughs> I do have to say a very special thank you to John Chemley and Chris Dick. You guys never say no. John, your generosity year after year is so appreciated. In fact, I'm talking to the captain after this to see if we can make you an honorary captain of the Salvation Army. I think you'd look good with one of those hats on. What do you think, Shemley? <laughs> in closing, I just want to say one thing. My poor wife's home and sick. God rest, she bless her. She uh, has a terrible call like I do. Just got over an evening place for surgery. But what are you, what are you laughing at? I mean, <laughs> And I think I referred to her last year as my 365-day Christmas present. Well, she's my forever Christmas present, so. Shaw, you have something to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, I just want to close by saying, you all know this, I don't know if you think you know this, but the, last year the kettles were significantly down. And I'm asking an appeal to all of you, if you could just give us a hand this year, an hour, two hours, get a team together to ring the bell for us, that would be great. I know a lot of you do it already. But that, that and the Radiothon are our biggest support for the Salvation Army. So thank you all for being here today, and I appreciate it all. Thank you to my board members. Thank you, Rita Mercia. Thank you, City Manager. Thank you all. All righty, good. Thank you so much. Sorry, I'm sorry. You are? I'm my way. Oh. <laughs> You're going to roast me? No, I forgot. Now we have Warren Shaw to come up to say a few words regarding our Radiothon. Take your time, Warren. <laughs> we only got till nine. Picked on by everybody here. I don't believe Bomo. He actually said that his wife had passed away. No. Somebody get her on the phone. Did you hear that? God rest her soul. I mean, was I the only one that heard that? Oh, well, you meant to say God bless her. And as far as our MC, who is one of my favorite people in the world, I do have an honorary town manager pin that was given to me by Jim Duggan. That's all I get? All right, so we, we have some things to talk about because, as Tommy indicated, it is Radiothon season. And, uh, you know, I can remember when, is Adi Sutcliffe here? No, Adi Sutcliffe came to me like 20 years ago when I first started doing my Saturday radio show. And he said, uh, you know, We've been doing a radiothon on the uh, uh, morning show, and it really hasn't generated much money. What do you say you and I do one on your show? And so, yeah, why not? So 
Artie shows up on the Saturday before Christmas and we start asking people to, you know, donate money. And we raise like five grand and we really think we've done something. And, but every year, you know, if you're that kind of person that just wants to keep growing it, and, and again, when you get the full flavor of what these folks do with the money, um, you want to make it greater. So uh, f every year we added something different. And then, of course, along came Fred Simon about 10 years ago, and, and he helped raise the bar tremendously. Um, and we still miss Fred. Um, but we're now a part of their budget. So this is no longer a matter of um, how much can we raise. It's a matter of we have to meet our goal and raise enough money so that they can provide the services they do right down here in Appleton Street. So, I mean, we do have fun with it, but it's a very serious matter because without this money, they just can't do their job right. And that's, that's how serious this matter is. So uh, I ask you to all get involved with it. Now, some of you already have, and I just want to run down a couple of quick things. Reader, I won't take too long. Huh? She'll, be, she'll be doing something else to me when I leave. The Radiothon started about a year ago, really, when you, when you think about it, and the people involved know this. So the Lindsay family ran a dueling piano for us down at their place back in the winter. And you know that was the first fundraising effort for the Radiothon this year. And they, you know, Mike Lindsay pays for the whole deal, right? So the, the, the entertainers and the food and everything else, we get the money. Uh, so that's the start. But then along comes Driven to Give with our friends in the Jarvis family. And um, we spent uh, about, what, seven or eight hours there a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know what we raised. It's not been, the number's not been given to me yet, but we probably grabbed, you know, between eight and 10 grand there, which is another good chunk. Uh, two weeks ago, my friend Mike Kunzler from Drake ran a comedy night for us. Now, we all know Mike. He's one of the generous guys in the Merrimack, most generous guys in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, so he puts together, and he did this last year, and he brought in a big check that said $27,000 on it. That's huge, right? So uh, this year he said, I'm just going to do it again. And you don't really even have to help me, he says. So he, he gets the sponsors, sells the tables, says, if you want to come, come. Pays for everything. We get the receipts. That's the kind of, so in order to raise a couple of hundred thousand dollars, that's, that's got to be part of the equation. So, I mean, we do, and there's, there's, there's a, you know, a fabulous band of people that make this Radiothon go, and they're out right now. Sue Plunkett and, and company are now uh, asking people for auction items, and we run an auction um, for seven or eight hours, and I think after seeing Tommy at the uh, comedy night, I'm just going to have him run the auction because, he, you, know, you know what he did? I mean, this is a funny story, right? So. Dave and Lori Trahan donate a week at their condo up north. He turns it into three of them and generates $7,500 for this event. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, that's talent and that's generosity over there. Did you get a check? Did you did you get a check out of them too, Tommy? Yes. While you were doing that, while you while you were fleecing them, did you, in, in addition to selling their vacation home, did you get money out of them too? The kid is fabulous. I, I may tell you, if you next year you want to go to this thing, right? So there are two comedians there that are really funny, but the funniest guy in the room was Golden, doing the auction. I mean that 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 was a lot of fun. It really was for anybody that wasn't there. That's <laughs> the Scotch. <laughs> so I mean, we really do have to. Uh, get this job done, that's the, that's the important thing. And I, I haven't seen Steve Pantitakis here, right? So I, Steve Pantitakis is the guy that sets the uh, goal, but in his absence, I'm gonna tell you that the goal is $200,000 this year, and that's, you know, we hope to exceed it. But I think $200,000 is a comfortable goal, and we're gonna do that. Um, I heard earlier Rita uh, thank the, uh, the firefighters, I mean, that's, so talk about the chunks of money that come into the Radiothon to make it successful. The Lowell, Drake, and Tingsboro firefighters go out and do a boot drive at the same time we're doing our thing. And they, that's a $25,000 hit. And you know that's, there's a synergy to that as well. So uh, great teamwork. Uh, Paul Belay runs an event downstairs while we're on the air. And he brings in 
all sorts of talent that none of them get paid. And people go in there and they get their picture taken. By the way, I, I do have official news. Santa Claus will be there this year. Um, he just he called me yesterday. Um, so we'll be getting, we'll be doing the photo ops with Santa. Uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, both confirmed to me they will be there. Um, and there's some other really interesting people. And I asked Paul if I could tell you, but I can't. But there, there are going to be some surprises that hopefully we can uh, let out in the next couple of weeks. But the idea is to make that event downstairs uh, the, the place where everybody wants to be that Saturday morning and, uh, and raise some money with it too because it just takes a lot of effort on everybody's part to raise $200,000 for the Salvation Army. And we all have fun doing it, uh, but when you see what these folks do with that money, it's, it's impressive and it makes you want to do this. So I appreciate anything any of you can do for the uh, Radiothon coming up on December 9th. Don't forget that date, December 9th. Jim Duggan's going to be there. He's going to give me December 8th. December 8th, right. I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> December, you know what it is? You know what the 9th is. So, I, I, you know. uh, so anyway, there's, a, there's an event on the 9th as well. But the, the 8th is, uh, is the Radiothon, and we need you all to participate in that, whether it be by bidding on items or making donations or coming down to Paul Belay, who is known as our entertainment director, uh, everybody works for free for the Radiothon, so if you join us and we'd love to have you, you're not getting paid, but it's a great thing to be involved with, one of the best things I've ever been involved with. Thank you very much. Well, so much for a brief remarks, but anyway, so... <laughs> it doesn't matter. Now, people do not know this about Warren, but I'll tell you a story of when Warren was a young man in his early 20s. Warren's father, who owned Shaw Farms, had numerous cows, but he didn't have a bull. So he sends his son Warren to California to select a beautiful bull. He gives him $600 to buy one bull, and he tells him to telegraph him when he, he, he's done so that he, he'll come down and he'll pick up the bull. So Warren looks at all the bulls and he picks one beauty out. He finds that this particular bull cost $599 and he'll not select any other, but he's left with only a dollar. So Warren goes to Western Union to send a telegram home to his dad, but he asks how much will this cost as he only has a dollar left. The cost would be a dollar a word. So Warren's thinking, oh my God, I, I, I don't know what to do. Well, as Warren thinks about it, and he's very bright, which is the only compliment I'll ever give you, he's thinking about what can I do in this situation? So he sends the word out comfortable, and the Western Union person says, what, comfortable, with that one word? And Warren says, yes, come for the bull. Come for the bull. So Warren, you're a very smart guy. Before I go any further, let me just recognize former Mayor Edward Bud Caulfield, <laughs> former City Councilor Corey Belanger, <laughs> former City Councilor Marty Laurie. We don't forget our previous councilors. We won't do that. All right, so moving right along. By the way, is Chris Scott in here? Is the son in here? Because I wanted to say to Chris Scott, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be misquoted and used against you. That's what I want. Anybody here from the funeral home? The directors, John McDonough, James O'Donnell, and Fred Healy. I know Fred's over there, John McDonough's there. Let me just say, to me, it's so hard to understand how a cemetery raised its burial cost and blamed it on the cost of living. That, I, I don't get it, I don't get it. So now we're getting into the nitty gritty of this event here. You can laugh now, but uh, I just hope that after it's all done, you still honor my motions, Eileen, okay? So this morning, I wish to introduce our honorary, uh, honorary, I'm sorry, honor, honorary, honorary Christmas Castle Chairperson Eileen. But before I let Eileen speak, we have a tradition of asking several of the chairpersons' friends 
to say a few words so we get to know her a little better. None of our guest roasters needed any prodding to be here this morning, and the Salvation Army thanks them for their participation. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first roaster. That would be Michael Gallagher. He's a real good friend, not to me, but he goes to the end of the earth for you. The problem is he won't stay there. <laughs> Yesterday was Halloween, Michael. You can take off the mask right now. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry. Michael has a sign hanging on his office wall. A good lawyer knows the law. A great lawyer knows the judge. Now I know why you're so popular. But the real reason that Michael is, is like this is he was deprived of a lot and a lot of things when he during his childhood. I believe oxygen tops the list. <laughs> so you're a good sport, Michael. I'd like to introduce Eileen's friend, uh, attorney, Michael. <laughs> Councilor Mercia, <laughs> Chancellor Maloney. By the way, did you read the Boston Globe this past weekend? Number seven on the Boston Globe list of top women-run businesses in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Jackie Maloney and UMass Globe. Congratulations. Councilor Mercy, I was going to start, unfortunately, with a flatulence joke, and now I can't. I had to cross it off. <laughs> Chancellor Maloney, Representative Golden, Chairman Bowman, Captains Ross, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all the good work you do. Congratulations to the Salvation Army. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to say a few words about my friend, Eileen Donahue. I gotta tell you, when I told my wife who was sitting over there that I was asked to help roast Eileen Donahue, she roared laughing. What's so funny, I asked. She said, first, you can't tell a joke. Second, your mother always told you never to speak anything but good about people. And third, what in the hell are you gonna roast Eileen Donahue about? Of course, she was right on all counts. And so I figured the best I could do is offer a few respectful insights based upon my 10 years of working in the same law office as Eileen. And you'll forgive me, and I hope that Eileen does as well, if I brought along a few candid photographs so that I can show the story a little bit and not just tell it. So if you'd be good enough to dim the lights a little bit. First, what you may know is that about Eileen is that she's very budget savvy and, and, and uh, frugal. She's done a great job over the last number of months since she started in the spring with the city's budget. And you may recall that back in the spring, she refused to take one cent more than her predecessor, Manager Murphy. But what you may not know is that she quickly found out she needed a lot more dough to keep herself in the style she's grown accustomed to. So since becoming manager, she's tried everything to make an extra buck. This past summer, for example, she found a part-time gig as a lifeguard. <laughs> and more recently, she learned that the CBA, this is true, on November 10th, the CBA was having a cornhole tournament with cash prizes. And so after City Hall closes at noon these days, Eileen can be seen rushing off to throw her bean bags. <laughs> Second insight is that Halloween obviously was last night. And what you may know is that Eileen loves Halloween. If you're in the area where she lives, there are two houses your kids go to on Halloween, right? One of them is Artie and Maureen Demoulis, and the other is Eileen and John's house because they're so generous with their candy. What you may not know though, is that Eileen all, also dresses up. She wears Halloween costumes to greet visitors and will sometimes even switch her cost costumes a couple of times during the night. And we just happen to have a few Facebook photos from the last couple of Halloweens. Now one caveat before you see them, because I have to lay the foundation. We all know Eileen's pedigree. She's been mayor, senator, could have been Senate president, right? Maybe could have been congressperson. Lori knows that. 
and is now manager. And I know having worked with her for 10 years, that all that power and authority never ever went to her head. But I have to tell you, these Facebook photos got me wondering a little bit. This is one from last year when she was still a political figure, apparently harboring greater political ambitions. And now that she's the city's grand poobah, these two were taken last night. <laughs> and frankly, this one shocked even me. <laughs> but in truth, I know that these photos aren't really who Eileen is, because when we worked together, she was very approachable and accessible. Although as Kara knows, and as Beverly Woods knows, who's her assistant, there was a little bit of a protocol you had to follow if you wanted to see the senator. Now, if you've been to the Gaslight Building where our office is, Eileen has the big office, or had the big office, at the end of the first hall. hall. I have this little office, little cubby hole, almost a closet, really, on the second floor. And if I had a request of Eileen, I had to follow the following protocol. Go down the stairs, I'd go to Beverly's office, and I would seek an audience with the senator. And I'd usually, well, sometimes, be granted leave to approach. And then I'd make my way down the corridor, and I'd knock on the big door, and I'd open the door, and Eileen almost invariably would be on the phone <laughs> talking to some big Boston power broker. And she'd give me the royal finger, <laughs> wait a second. And I'd usually wait, I'd stand there waiting, usually no more than an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> and when she'd finished, she'd motion me in and I'd open the door further. And after I genuflected, I'd start with the required greeting, Your Excellency. Well, at least most of the time I forgot, one time I forgot, and right in the pit of misery. <laughs> but when I did get the chance to, ch to state my request, she was always very good about it. And this is what she'd do, she'd refer it to subcommittee. And for some reason, I'd never hear of it again. Now that, of course, none of that is remotely true. But I did do that after I was asked to roast Eileen. I went around to the folks in our office. Now we didn't have a practice which was complimentary in the sense that we worked with each other. She had her own gig going and she was in the same office, but folks got to know her. And I asked them for honest impressions of Senator Donahue over the years. And here are a few of them. From one of our lawyers, Eileen is the perfect city manager for Lowell because she's trilingual. She speaks fluent English, fluent Spanish, and conversational Lowell politics. From an attorney who only recently started with us, I remember how cheerfully Eileen refers to herself as a blow-in. When we first met, I mentioned I wasn't from Lowell originally and she responded, that's great, I'm a blow-in too like it was the best thing in the world to be. We have a Pilates class, believe it or not, a couple of times a month in the office. And our office manager wrote this. Eileen did Pilates whenever possible, but being a state senator didn't allow her to be very flexible. <laughs> this last one was written by one of our paralegals without a hint of irony. Eileen's a class act and smart, even though she's from Holyoke. <laughs> Let me finish by mentioning more seriously that in just the last year, before Eileen left at one of our office gatherings, we played a little game. Everyone had to write a personal fact about themselves on a piece of paper, and then we all had to guess to whom that personal fact applied. Most wrote down some personal achievement or travel adventure, but one person wrote this. I was extremely shy as a child. 
No one guessed at the time that the author of that fact was our then sitting Senator Eileen Donahue. How could that be, we felt? Listen to these facts. Since the mass Senate districts were redrawn in 1977, almost 40 years ago, or more than 40, Eileen's been the first Middlesex district's only female Democratic senator. In the 182 year history of the city of Lowell, since 1836 of 91 mayors, Eileen was only the second female mayor. And in the 74 year history of planning government here in Lowell, since 1944, Eileen, of course, is the first and only female city manager. A first-rate lawyer for 39 years, a city councilor for 12, a state senator for seven, and now a city manager. Someone commonly called to be out given speeches constantly in the public eye. How could that personal fact be? But it gives us a clue as to the kind of person that Eileen Donahue is. Self-effacing, unpretentious, a person who remembers where she came from, a big Irish family in a gateway town, a person who carries herself and unfailingly acts with humility and grace and professionalism and civility and a respect for all, regardless of rank or station. 30 years ago now, 30 years ago, John and Eileen chose to move to the city of Lowell. In the intervening years, as all of you know, she's been a leader in what really matters in towns like ours, public education, economic development, and the arts, championing the construction of the arena and the ballpark, helping to build 14 new schools, creating a Lowell Arts District, and leading the charge for a new Lowell High School. As a board member of, of the Girls, Inc., and a founder of the Women Working Wonders Fund, some say that Eileen is a first-rate example for young women. I disagree. I think she's a great role model for all of us, as to how to live a public life helping to solve real problems, free from even the hint of scandal, with a moral compass always pointing due north. There are many things, many things that Eileen Donahue could have done for a lot more personal benefit and a lot less stress. We're all better off here in the city of Lowell, though, because she chose to come to and ultimately devote a great deal of her career and life to her adopted hometown. So congratulations, Eileen. Congratulations to the Salvation Army for all the good work you do, and thank you all. Very good, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, I, I also want to uh, cut in a little bit and introduce our, um, uh, our Captain Timothy Ross. I, in, I forgot about him. I'm sorry. Come on up. <laughs> the most important guy, and I forget about him. Thank you. Just to take a few moments of your time. Uh, we have these program books that uh, we provided for you that tell you a little bit more about the Salvation Army and what the money goes to uh, that we raised here this morning. But today kicks off our red, uh, our Christmas castle uh, breakfast. This event really kicks off our Christmas season. And we really couldn't do it without the support of so many people. We thank uh, certainly our sponsors who have helped to make this event a success. And we have to say a big thank you to you. We say thank you to the uh, 980 WCAP and uh, Sam Poultron and uh, the team there. They're broadcasting live this morning, so thank you for that. And certainly, we say thank you to LTC for broadcasting as well uh, this breakfast. Special thank you to Lowell Sun for all the publicity they give to the Salvation Army during uh, these, these times. And uh, my wife and I came here about four months ago. We were uh, appointed to take care of this Salvation Army here in Lowell. And uh, over the time, we've uh, gotten to know some people, and in about two hours from now, our building will be uh, full of people lining up to take uh, applications for Thanksgiving and Christmas assistance. Actually, they're probably lining up right now as I speak, as people want to be early. And as I, we, 
My wife and I, as we've uh, spoken to people, we've gotten to know some and introduced to others, maybe the, there's a kind of a theme that we've seen over, the, uh, over these few months. And I take out of my pocket some chains. And really the theme is this, that small chains makes a big change. The small chains that are dropped in our buckets as you hear the bells ringing over the next few weeks, actually they start in about 13 days. But this change as it goes into the bucket, you might not think that it's a lot, but it makes big change. We see that in a radiothon. We see that in, here this morning at the Christmas Castle Breakfast. And let me just share, share with you two brief stories. It was uh, back in an August evening. I went home after working at the Salvation Army. And we began to sit around the table and have dinner. And then all of a sudden, my phone begins to vibrate uh, several, for several moments. And in our family, we tried to put the electronics down while we're having dinner. And my wife had made us nice, delicious meals. We're sitting at the table. My phone continues to vibrate and vibrate. Well, this is strange. And so eventually, I, I uh, picked it up. And I see uh, notifications that there are several house fires going on in Lawrence. And so uh, the next uh, text that comes is from our emergency disaster volunteer team uh, that is assembled. Uh, in Lowell, and we begin to figure out how we need to respond as the Salvation Army. We have an emergency disaster truck that is uh, stacked with food and, uh, and liquids and water and coffee and those kinds of things. And so our, our team assembled, we got into the truck, and the three of us began to drive towards Lawrence. Not an easy task when all of a sudden uh, they make uh, eva uh, evacuation uh, mandatory out of the city of Lawrence. And so we finally get there to the city, to uh, the command staging area, and we set up our canteen, we set up our coffee and uh, snacks and those kinds of things. And for the next seven and a half hours, we just stood there as fire trucks came by. They were waiting to go back out into the city of Lawrence and get their instructions. And as they came around, we just uh, brought coffee and water and uh, snacks to them. For seven and a half hours, our canteen responded. And then over the course of the next week, we had up to six canteens serving in that area. But it's really about how, uh, helping our neighbors in need, isn't it? We never know at the moment's time when our neighbors will call for help. And it's really this small change, it all adds up. And it makes big change in people's lives. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the help of each of you on a hot August morning or evening when the, when the call goes out. The Salvation Army is there to respond. So thank you for, con uh, for contribu uh, contributing to the Salvation Army each and every day. One other wonderful opportunity that we get to do is to meet many supporters such as yourselves in, in a room like this. And often we ask each of our supporters, why? Why do you give to the Salvation Army? And this one gentleman was uh, telling us his story. And he said that uh, he would give money to the Salvation Army through the mail each month. And one time, somebody invited him to come take a tour of the Salvation Army. So he, he took them up on their uh, offer, and he came down to Appleton Street, and he took a tour. And he began to see where, where his money was being spent. He, he would see the seniors in our gym eating a meal. He would see uh, people in our food pantry coming in and taking food and going out and bringing it, bringing it to their home. He would see uh, emergency services, uh, rental assistance, and those kinds of things going on. And he would see the kids come in, and he would see uh, ca these character, youth character building programs taking place. And he was so impressed with what was going on, he began to say, oh, how can I get involved? And so uh, we brainstormed uh, some things, and uh, our predecessor, Captain David Childs, began to gave, give him some information. And today, he's actually an assistant leader of one of our youth programs that he was so impressed that he loved the brass music that now he plays in the brass band. And it's all because someone gave him the opportunity to, share, to show where his money was going to. Thank you for your support. Thank you for allowing us to transform lives day in and day out because your small chains helps us to make big chains. Thank you and God bless you. Very beautiful, Captain. Thank you. Up next, ooh, I don't know about this one. Uh, what the heck? Nobody's safe today. <laughs> Chancellor Maloney ordered a pizza, and the young man who delivered the pizza to her door is a UMass Lowell student. Chancellor Maloney asked the college student, what is the usual tip for such a delivery? 
Well, replied the youth, this is my first trip here, but the other guys say if I get a quarter out of you, I'll be doing great. <laughs> oh, is that so, says Jackie. Well, just to show them how wrong they are, here's five dollars. Thanks, replied the student. I'll put this towards my college fund. By the way, what are you studying, asked Jackie. The lad smiled and said, applied psychology. <laughs> you get a great, great uh, education at UMass Lowell. Up now is Chancellor Jackie Maloney. We're very proud of her. Well, thank you, Counselor Mercier. I consider that actually taking it pretty easy on me since you've been so tough on everyone else. So good morning, everyone. What a terrific crowd. It's great to be here and be a part of this kickoff of the Christmas season. Such an important tradition for the city of Lowell. Captain, those were very inspiring words, and I know that everyone here stands behind you in making sure that we raise the funds that you need for the great work that the Salvation Army does. We all see it. We're all members of this community. They take care of our neediest members. Thank you. Congratulations, of course, to this year's honoree, my good friend and colleague, City Manager Eileen Donahue. And you're gonna hear a common thread, I think, here today, because while we all love Eileen, we're not sure she was the best candidate for a roast. I mean, after all, does she really have any faults? She's fair, smart, hardworking, dedicated to all things Lowell. She's given so much to the city and her Senate district over the years, and she's already doing a great job as city manager after just six months on the job. Of course, another quality of Eileen's is that she's so honest, actually, She's so honest, sometimes you could say she's a little bit naive, too. Like the time many years ago, Eileen was leaving the State House after a late night session, and she was mugged by a couple of hooligans trying to grab her purse. She put up a really good fight, but of course, Eileen being Eileen, she tried not to hurt them. And finally, they were able to get a hold of her wallet, opened it up, and they found only $2. One of them asked, why the heck did you fight so hard over $2? And Eileen said, well, I was worried you'd get the $400 in my shoe. <laughs> but of course, that's Eileen. And as honest as she is, she's even more generous, a quality which has actually become legendary through the years. And after, she attended a wake for a prominent Lowellian who had passed away. Towards the end of the wake, the funeral director, Jim O'Donnell, addressed the large crowd and said that the state delegation had just arrived. And four of them would like to make a few remarks and give a parting gift to their longtime friend. The first representative, Dave Nangle, came up to the casket and said he was a great friend admirer of the deceased and he wanted to give him a gift and perhaps aid him in his journey to the afterlife. Dave, and we all know how dramatic Dave can be, Dave dramatically took out a $100 bill and deposited it in the suit coat pocket of the deceased with a little showing so that those he met in heaven could see it. Of course, he was followed by Representative Tom Golden, who came up and said, I agree with Dave's sentiments. <laughs> Not bad for Tom Golden. <laughs> and with great flourish, he produced another $100 bill and deposited it into the pocket as well. Of course, Roddy Mom stood up and did the same, and then it was Eileen's turn. And she said she was so moved by the gesture of her colleagues that she wanted to join them in contributing a hundred dollars for the journey of their colleague to heaven. She went up to the casket, <laughs> weeping, took out the two hundred dollars in cash that, that had been put in and put in a check for three hundred. 
I knew then that Eileen would make a great city manager. Of course, recently, so recently, I was speaking with my new best friend, Oprah Winfrey, in case you hadn't heard, she is coming to Lowell. And I was telling her about Eileen Donahue and the very tough job she has as city manager. Oprah, being the generous and compassionate person that she is, said, we should come up with some gifts for her. So we did. We put together a little package and no, Eileen, don't reach under your seat because there is no free car there. <laughs> so, first, first gift. After 35 years of dedicated service to Lowell, you and your husband, John, will no longer be referred to as Lowellians. <laughs> second, Oprah cancels her appearance at the Sangha Center to perform at the city-owned Lowell Memorial Auditorium. Oh wait, that can't happen because the dancing poodles from Poughkeepsie are performing that <laughs> night. Number three, Ed Kennedy wins the Senate seat and is replaced on the council by anyone else from Belvedere. <laughs> Number four, this wonderful honeymoon period that you're having right now with this great city council will last through the renewal of your new contract. <laughs> Number five, this is one the city council will enjoy also. UMass Lowell won't take any more properties off the tax roll. <laughs> well, except for maybe a certain dentist office on Narcan Drug. <laughs> and of course, while you're getting so good at eminent domain, I was thinking maybe you'd want to take a certain private student housing project that's across from the high school. <laughs> oh wait, that was on my list, sorry. <laughs> on another note, you may know that City Hall is closed on Friday afternoons, a schedule that was established by former manager Murphy. Oh, is he here this morning? What happened to him, anyone? Anyone ever see him anymore? <laughs> but he moved his Friday afternoon meetings to Mount Pleasant. Now, we're not sure what Eileen has planned, but we're thinking it might have something to do with the spa at Wentworth by the sea. Of course, I'm hoping to be part of that plan. <laughs> Number eight, now this one is a real sacrifice, Eileen, but because you're such a good friend, I really wanna make your job easier, and I'm willing to do this. I would gladly swap my boss for your nine. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess maybe that might not be a fair trade. So, just in case you do have any trouble with your bosses, I'm gonna forward a little gift that Patty McCafferty gave to me when we started working with Marty Meehan. And it goes something like this, a button, just in case those city councilors want something outrageous. No! 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 no. Okay? <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> so finally, you know, Eileen's been awfully nice to me for the last few weeks, and I was kind of wondering why. I mean, she had to know I wouldn't be very hard on her and I actually want her to speak to me after this. But then I realized all she wanted was some good Oprah ticket. So Eileen, I took the ticket you bought, thank you, you and John, for your generosity, so that you all know all the money from the Oprah event will go towards scholarships because Oprah is donating all of her time. So, so Eileen, so that you don't have to be nice to me anymore, here's your front row ticket. <laughs> and we've thrown in some extra tickets for the Salvation Army. Thank you for all the work that you do. Eileen, we do all love you. Congratulations on all your great successes, and thank you for all you do for this wonderful community.
you may not use that on my motions. Please. Thank you. That was good, Jackie. I didn't think you could be funny, but you did. You did it. You did it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Next up is a very funny gentleman, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about him because I do know Tom Golden. Did you know, and I bet you didn't, that Tom Golden, was a, before he was a state rep, he was one of the best door-to-door -door security alarm salesmen for many years running. He told me the trick. The trick was to just leave a brochure on the kitchen table if there were nobody home. So there it is. They called him immediately. And I never realized all the many talents that Tom Golden has, such as world history. He was telling me that in India's Mahatma Gandhi often walked barefoot, which produced an impressive set of calluses on his feet. He also ate very little, making him rather frail. And with his odd diet, he often suffered from bad breath. So Tom, with what you told me, let me see if I have this straight. That made him a super calloused, fragile mystic with the halitosis, right? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the dean, the greatest, everyone's friend, and I'm only here because he's a roaster. There you go. Good morning. Let's try that one. Good morning. Good morning. Is everyone awake? Yes. Is everyone ready? Yes. You're going to have some fun. This is a lot easier with a scotch, I have to say that. <laughs> All right, on behalf of the delegation, State Representative Colleen Gary, my good friend that's here, thank you very much, Colleen, for making it all the way from Dracut. We appreciate that. My good friend Dave Nangle, who was just here and just left moments ago, and State Representative Roddy Ma, back in the saddle again. Thank you very much, Roddy, for being back. I have to say it's been an honor for myself as well as the entire delegation to serve with Eileen as our senator. Truthfully, she was extremely well respected by the entire State House. Her future in the State House could have went anywhere, and she knows that. But she chose to make her future here in the city of Lowell. The Salvation Army could not have done a better job in choosing someone with Eileen's qualities. Just a wonderful, wonderful person. Similar to the Salvation Army, one of their mottos, I know we have a few of them, doing the most good. Well, I have to say, Eileen Donahue, my friend, has spent a lifetime helping others and doing the most good. <laughs> now is the hardest part of my job, roasting someone as professional, as nice, Talented, gifted, brilliant, bright, dazzling, generous, and unbelievably smart as Eileen. Have I gone on a little too long? Probably not. I'm just hoping and praying to God that she returns my phone calls after this is done. And to CAP, thank you very much. We all know everybody gets it. Well, hopefully everyone gets these jokes today. So. Let me start off by saying congratulations to our Boston Red Sox for winning the World Series. Imagine that. Put your hands together for the Boston Red Sox. Four rings in 14 years. It's like President Trump's marriage history. It's like President Trump's marriage history. OK. That's what I was waiting for. Most of you know that manager Donahue, unfortunately, is not from Lowell originally. She's from Holyoke. And Holyoke is uh, it's the only city in Massachusetts that actually has more Yankee fans than Red Sox fans. Truth be told, she's a Yankee fan. This is actually fact. This is not supposed to be a joke. This is really sad. Due to the fact that Yankee fans constantly talk about the past, about the past and how wonderful they were, unfortunately for Eileen and the rest of Holyoke, ESPN is now reporting that all Yankee games will be now televised on the History Channel because the Boston Red Sox are back. I'm sorry. Eddie. It wasn't that bad. That's actually fact. She is a Yankee fan. Well, and another bit of news. We all saw that Whitey Bulger 
He was killed. Rumor has it he was looking to be transferred to a warmer climate. My guess is he's not going to heaven, so I'm sure he's going to be nice and toasty where he's going. <laughs> but let's, on, let's be honest about this. Was his murder really that surprising? I mean, come on. He was a mob boss. You know, studies have shown one thing. Being a mob boss is the second riskiest job in America. It is. Now, you would say the city manager's job is pretty risky, but with a four-year contract, it's not that risky, so we got to take that off the table. The riskiest job in the United States, everyone want to know what it is? It's the Lowell Superintendent of Schools, so thank God you're not the Lowell Superintendent of Schools. That wasn't that bad, come on. I mean, I've had more Superintendent of Schools than Donald Trump's had marriages. This is a Donald Trump theme. I mean, come on, he picks on everybody else. Late one night, a mugger wearing a ski mask jumped in the path of manager Eileen Donahue and said, give me your money, he demanded. Indignant, Eileen replied, you can't do this. I have 265 sworn police officers and I'm the manager of the city of Lowell. In that case, the robber replied, give me my money. Last, but certainly not least, Eileen is sitting in her office, and if you've had an opportunity, it's unbelievable. Posh, beautiful, dynamite, new curtains, it's great. Just like a former governor that did. But she really does a nice job. She's sitting in there, and one day, because there's really nothing going on in the city of Lowell, it's kind of quiet, she's bored. So she decides to look in the armoire that Kevin Murphy left. She poked through the contents, and she came across an old brass lamp. This will look good on my mantle, she said. While polishing the lamp, a genie appeared. And you guessed it, three wishes were granted. She says to the genie, I would like an ice cold Coke. Just like that, an ice cold Coke. Yeah, this is pretty good. I wish I could get the city council to do this. Now, she starts to clearly state for her second wish. I'd like to be on a tropical island with the love of my life, my best friend, my husband, John. Moments later, she's on this tropical island, enjoying herself with her wonderful husband. She really starts to think about her third wish. Hmm tells the genie, this city is absolutely crazy. The council, the high school, the problems day in and out. I wish I never had to work again. Bam, she's back in the Massachusetts State Senate. <laughs> Congratulations to Eileen. Congratulations to the Salvation Army. They do the most, they do the best. You know something, everybody? Merry Christmas, dig deep, and let's help the Salvation Army out. Thank you, Tom. You were funny. <laughs> Not. No, I no, no. no, you were. You were. I'm sorry. You were. Oh, it hurts. oh really no, hurts. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you so much. I wouldn't be here if he was a roaster. I'd be sitting out there with you. So thank you. If whoever gets chosen next year, please let him roast again. <laughs> thank you. Um, now, we, uh, I want you to know that we were going to have the breakfast at Kali but Eileen voted against it. <laughs> I am so proud of Eileen, and because she is the city manager, she will no longer be interrupted by people while she is talking to herself. <laughs> Eileen is married to John O'Connor for how many years, Eileen? 37 years. That's right, that's a good thing. Thank you so much. That's All right, John. And they are a wonderful couple, but they argue, like most couples, like Ralph and I used to. And I know that you want repairs done, Eileen. You have to stop nagging. John, fix it. John, fix it. For goodness sakes, Eileen, six months is not that long. Leave the poor guy alone. He'll get to it eventually. And I know that John told you his philosophy about fixing things, and it only requires two tools in life. 
WD-40 and duct tape. If it doesn't move and should, use the WD-40. If it shouldn't move and it does, use the duct tape. And I might add to that, if you can't fix it with a hammer, it's an electrical problem. But Eileen, she personally told me what bugs her the most is that when husbands think that their wives know where everything is, and that's right, right, Eileen? Like they think that we're equipped with a tracking device. So John says, Eileen, Eileen, do we have any Doritos? Like he can't go over and lift up the sofa cushion and look for himself. <laughs> what a guy, what's wrong with you? But thank you for being a great sport. And I, I didn't want to really hurt you. I really could have, but I, I didn't. I'll wait till Tuesdays. Thank you so much. Thank you. Eileen Donovan. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Rita, that was fantastic. Let me just say, Rita Mercier, who has done so much for the city, for the Salvation Army, for years and years and years, she's been out there in all kinds of weather, ringing the bell, bringing in money, much needed money for the Salvation Army. I'm not used to Rita roasting me on a, a Thursday morning. That usually happens on Tuesday night. But I'm not gonna make any jokes about Rita. You know, she's one of my bosses. These are the best bosses in the world. And uh, whatever jokes she tells, you clap and laugh, but no, seriously, I, I um, am honored to be here today. And I do want to say about the Salvation Army, the wonderful work that they do day in and day out, year in and year out. We do see their kettles out at this season, but that doesn't mean this is the only time they're working. And I can tell you in my years of public service, the work and the good that they do right here in the city of Lowell and beyond is phenomenal. The monies that are raised, whether it's the Radiothon or the Kettles or all of the other efforts are spent right here for the community in the city of Lowell. So I want to thank you both Captain Tim and Captain Nicole. This is, thank you for what you do. And Tom Bommel, you know, again, someone who gives selflessly uh, year in and year out and works so hard on this event and so many events and doesn't look for any credit or any accolades and honestly we do want to wish his wife well that she's feeling better tom and you take time away from caring for her to be here and be for other people so thank you to you and your entire board for what you're doing uh, warren shaw Warren, again, as you may all know here in the room, does the Radiothon, but so much work goes into this, and, and I don't think people have any idea how much work that he and his team put in, and it is a team effort, uh, and it's taken so many people, lining up those auction items, making sure that these uh, monies are raised, and there's a real passion and dedication. Uh, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, Warren asked, me and town, other town managers, Jim Duggan here, uh, to go and participate in the Driven to Give out at Jarvis Lincoln Mercury. Thank you to the Jarvis family for what you do. Uh, but what he didn't tell me when I got there that all the towns were going to gang up on the city of Lowell. I don't know if you guys knew this, but so the idea was bring out people from your community to drive a Lincoln and monies would be given for each participant and we would keep score and, and uh, whoever won. It was a friendly competition. And, uh, but I get there and I'm told, well, all the towns are going to band together against the city of Lowell. So all our, our drives will work against, and you have to do it all on your own from all the people of Lowell. Rita participated. We were trying to get people there. And when I left uh, Jarvis that day, Lowell was in the lead. I think when you left, Lowell was in the lead. And uh, then I hear through the grapevine, no, the town's won. Uh, Warren was in charge of the count together with the other, the other town manager, Jim Duggan. And uh, next thing we know, I'm told the town's won. But I did reserve the right to you know, uh, have final say in the ruling. But then in Lowell, we all know that it ain't over till Secretary of State Bill Galvin tells us it's over, Warren. So we'll be calling the Secretary of State today for a 
just a quick inquiry into that. But thank you for what you do, Warren, because it really is a tremendous benefit to everybody. Um, I want to thank my good friend. I want to thank my good friend Michael Gallagher for being here, being a good sport in roasting me today. And thank you for those pictures. They were just phenomenal. I haven't even seen them myself, so I appreciate that. Um, but uh, thank you for what you do. You know, I did have the privilege of practicing law at Gallagher and Kavanaugh for 10 years. You know, tremendous law firm in the city that is involved in so many uh, good causes, whether it's for nonprofits, whether it's for artists. I did understand after a while, I would be in there and, and as I was a state senator, I'd sometimes have office hours up there, and there would be people coming through the door. And I thought, oh, I wonder if they're a client of uh, the firm. And it was just political person after political person and advice. And that's when I figured out that Michael's real job is the godfather. <laughs> that, but truly, you do um, participate and contribute and support everything law. So thank you. Uh, unlike a blow-in, Michael is multi-generational law. So thank you for what you do. I also would like to thank uh, Jackie Maloney. You know, Jackie, you have done an amazing job as chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Law. I can tell you, when I served in the State House. Uh, and was a vice chair of higher education for all the years that I was there. The most respected institution, truly, in the Commonwealth is the University of Massachusetts Law, and I think Tom Golden can attest to that. You've done a fabulous job, uh, and I congratulate you on being one of the top women-run businesses in the Commonwealth. And as Jackie says when she goes home and sees Ed, it's good to be Queen Ed. So congratulations, Jackie. And to my very good friend, Tom Golden. You know, Tom, I, I was a little afraid he was going to auction me off today. <laughs> I didn't know what the terms would be, though. So thank you for, you wouldn't do that in this day and age, though. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, but, you know, Tom is, is really not, not just a, a great rep state representative who works so hard for his district, uh, a great sport, a tremendous auctioneer, uh, and just, Thank you for being a roaster. You know, um, a few weeks back, uh, Tom and Dave and Roddy were visiting City Hall. And we were talking about things in Lowell. And I was trying to you know, talk to them. I'm on the other side now. So I'm trying to find out if they could get some money for us here in the city of Lowell. And we were talking about a number of initiatives. And, and um, we started talking about, um, I, I was asking them if there was money if they thought in the budget or in the cultural uh, line items for a short story dispenser um, that we could put on the, st on the street. And uh, they were looking puzzled and Dave Nangle said to me, well, excuse me, Eileen, what, what is a short story dispenser? And, and Tommy said, well, wait a minute, before we get there, what's a short story? <laughs> I think it's because he's such a talker. There's no such thing in his line of work. But th but thank you, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and, and I also would like to, again, thank all of you throughout the community who support the Salvation Army. Fire Department, outstanding for what you do. And I mean that, not just for the Salvation Army, but for everything that the Fire Department does for the city of Lowell. We are so blessed with our public safety here in the city. Uh, and I do, want, last but not least, want to recognize and thank uh, some of my family who are here. My husband, John, who took some ribbing today, very John O'Connor. My brother, Dan Donahue, and his wife, Kathleen. My sister, Peggy Ouellette. My niece, Shayla Kennedy. And uh, our new assistant city manager, uh, Kara Keefe Mullen. So thank you, thank you, Rita. You know, one thing I always remember, Rita and I both came into the city council together. We ran our first election together. Rita has been a steadfast councilor, mayor, longest serving city councilor on the city council, uh, dedicated to all things Lowell. Now she's my boss and we will continue to work together. I love you, Rita. Thank you for doing what you do.
Let's hear it for Eileen. Is she not the classiest lady? I'm so proud of you, Eileen. Great choice, great choice. Thank you for being such a sport as well. Some people want great things to happen. Some wish for it to happen. And others, like yourself, make it happen. We are put on this earth not to see through each other, but to see each other through. As Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we do, but we make a life by what we give. You are these very special people who got up so very early to attend a breakfast that you probably never eat any other day anyway, but you're here and you did it to help people you probably never even know. You did it to help other families by your kind gesture, and I thank each and every one of you for it, for coming out to honor Eileen to the roasters. Thank you so very much. Please know that I was only kidding, and that you're just wonderful people. To WCAP, Sam Poulton, Teddy Panos, Alex back at the studio and the staff, to uh, LTC in the back here, to all those listening at this broadcast, who no doubt, and I'm very grateful, will contribute to this great cause when you see a kettle out there or a boot, please give. To our honorary guest, City Manager Eileen Donahue, one of the classiest women I know, I'm very proud of her, and her roasters. Thanks for being such great sports. And to the wait staff here this morning, let's hear it for the wait staff. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Great job. I know, I, I used to be a wait staff. To the Javis family and crew for Driven to Give, we thank you. Thanks for our Christmas castle breakfast. That's it for it. Thank you and God bless. But before we leave, may I bring up uh, Captain uh, Nicole Ross for the benediction. I love you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Captain. It's been a good morning, and I hope this morning that you feel like it's time well spent, time well spent on behalf of others. As you leave, I, I have to remind you that there will be kettles that you can start by making a donation just now. As you leave, those will be at the doors. Um, it really absolutely, truly is a privilege to work for others through the Salvation Army. And we don't take that lightly, we don't take that for granted. It's a work that does transform lives. It's really a collision of need and service um, that really ushers in relief and the opportunity for change for the individual. Over the years, I have seen, I've had this opportunity, I've seen it firsthand, I've seen this collision take on many different shapes. It might look like a character building program for children, a diversion program for first time offenders, a food pantry, a hot meal, or even a warm smile on a caring individual taking the time to listen to another story. Today, know that you have done for others. And that as the Salvation Army in the greater Lowell area, we promise to be present. We promise to stand in the gap and to do for others what the Lord has strategically placed the Salvation Army to do. And as one of our great leaders, General Evangeline Booth said, there is no reward equal to that of doing the most good to the most people in the most need. And so I ask that you stand with me and join with me in praying the benediction this morning. Thank you for your time and your attention and your support. Father, we take this moment to pause, to recognize you, to thank you for this time set aside in our very busy lives. Um, to not be hurried, but, but to be the, of the work for others. And so I just ask a blessing on each person in this room, on their families and the places in which they influence, Lord. Be their hands, be their feet. Allow for us truly to, to notice those around us and to offer our resources on behalf of other people. So thank you for each person. As we enter this holiday season, may we be mindful of the gifts that you've bestowed upon us and given to us. We'll be busy. We'll be busy with your work that you have for each of us to make this world a better place. We thank you and we love you in your son's precious name. We pray all this. Amen. Go in peace, everyone.